But Rohan Verma joins us. He's of course the CEO and Executive Director from Map My India joining us on the show right now. Rohan, hi, good to be speaking with you. Uh, before coming to the earnings and all of that, I just wanted to kind of get a sense from you about the competition because I know this is something that you have been quite vocal about. Uh, now Ola is also a listed player, so I'm just trying to get a better understanding from you. Um, what's the USP that you offer versus what's the mode for a lot of people who are trying to catch up on this technology? Sure. Thanks for having me. Uh, mapping is a fairly serious business and uh, building it is not at all easy. Uh, globally, if you see hundreds or thousands of companies may have tried to get into mapping, whether 30 years ago or even a few years ago, uh, but very few have sustained and very few have succeeded. You can count on your fingers. I mean, uh, the number of companies globally. In India, it is us who has been there. Building a map for a country as complex and dynamic as India, 3.3 million square kilometers, changing every day, updating that, uh, you know, adding new places, uh, being accurate, uh, having it stress tested for multiple use cases, not just one narrow use case. You know, there is so many things that go into the DNA, into an organization, into the time investment, into the capital, into the expertise and the experience that uh, you know, it takes a long time for a mapping company to get established. And it's at the same time, it's not that Map India is sitting on a 2D map. We are making a 3D map, a high definition map, a real time updating what we call 4D map, the 3D junction views. There's so many features in our map data that I think it's very hard to replicate or to compete. Uh, of course, people will try and everybody is most welcome to do it fairly, but uh, it is quite hard. How much of your business is coming from pure Anvity B2B business where you've leased out to corporates and you're enjoying benefits of Anvity? Sure. Hi, Nikunj. Yeah, I mean, our business overall is a mass SaaS and pass play, which is maps as a service, software as a service, platform as a service. There's uh, segments are automotive and mobility tech as well as consumer tech and enterprise digital transformation. Companies, companies are across automotive which pay us annuities for uh, embedding our software and maps into their vehicles and their companion apps, <coughs> or mobility companies, logistics companies, taxi companies who pay us for embedding our solutions there, or e-commerce companies or banks or government organizations, all of which are essentially paying us uh, you know, usage fee uh, for the licenses and subscriptions and royalties for our products. All of it is that. Much of the upside potentially could come in coming years after what we heard in the budget, which is that they are looking at creating a large land mass, which would uh, land, um, you know, records, if I may use the right terminology, land records. How will that change life for Map I mean, uh, that's what uh, this sector is. It's a sunrise sector. Uh, that's why we say that besides maps and IoT, the third leg of our business is, is drones. Uh, Drone-based digital twins is something, digital twin 3D mapping that we've been doing uh, is definitely on the upswing. Uh, and actually, we've been able to monetize it with the help of our various software and solutions across a broad range of government and infrastructure uh, kind of uh, 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 private sector customers, besides you know this emerging area of tourism and real estate, but also these things can be used. So land records specifically, we've been working on that area for the last 10 plus years. We had property tax in the in the uh, in the urban uh, municipalities or land records, uh, you know, in the rural areas. So Mitwa as a as a scheme to give, you know, uh, rural uh, Abadi areas the the you know financial inclusion based on the actual landmass geospatially mapped using drones is something that we've been doing. Uh, so this will give a further fill up. And, you know, that's why we're so bullish about both the addressable market and the milestone that uh, we've set for ourselves by FI27, FI28 of crossing a thousand crores. Okay, so you're on track to that thousand crore revenue by FI27. That means a CAGR of 35-40%. You're confident of doing that even in FI25? Uh, uh, you know, uh, if you look at the open order book that we had at the end of the year, it's 1300 crores. Uh, the year before it was 900 crores. Uh, you know, our revenue is fairly predictable in the sense that, you know, but it's an annual business. I don't want to get into a kind of quarter by quarter. Um, although, you know, even on that front, I think we're doing fine. We're off to a good start. Uh, and it's as expected based on our open order book. And yeah, we're fairly confident, uh, you know, 
fully confident on achieving this milestone by FY27, FY28. And what about your cash levels, 552 odd crores that you have on books right now? Um, are there any acquisitions in the pipeline? What's the game plan for the, um, the use of uh, or the utilization of the cash on books? Sure, thanks. Yeah, the core business is heavily profitable, so it uh, puts out cash every quarter. And, you know, our focus is, uh, while, you know, we are cost efficient, we have a fixed cost type of business, but, you know, two things that we are continuously kind of investing in. One is in terms of kind of product and deep tech and innovation. And so you'll keep seeing announcements from us in more and more products. We're not a single product, single industry uh, kind of company. It's a multi-product, multi-industry play, which means there are so many growth engines. And we keep investing behind each of those if cells, if I may say, uh, you know, in that kind of matrix for, for, for growth. So product, uh, at all our products and various market segments, there's continuous investment happening for. And, and like I said, besides products, it's the go-to market. Uh, so marketing side, both for brand awareness, more people need to know about MapVendia because those who know, know how good our products are. Uh, and, you know, we built a solid business on that. But I feel if more people know about it, I think they will benefit from it and our business will benefit from it. So uh, the other side, of course, is on the marketing front that we'll continue to invest. And that's how kind of the organic use of cash is. Inorganic, you know, we keep looking at various opportunities. And, you know, if it makes sense for the business, um, I mean, this is a business that has de delivered fairly high return on capital uh, employed over the long term and not just the last few years that we've been listed. So if it makes sense, uh, you know, we, we'll, we'll undertake the right inorganic, but suffice to say, there's already a lot of things that you know are planned for for growth. Okay, and uh, pardon me if you've already addressed that, but I wanted to kind of discuss more as to what the Gen AI and AI impact is going to be because you expanded the AI-driven data analytics and consulting business of yours as well. When do you see the benefits accruing, and what incremental growth are you expecting from that? Sure, I mean AI is core to kind of what we do, both in terms of making our, us and our products super efficient and scaling, and this is something. We've been using internally for actually almost the last five to seven years, leveraging the power of our computer vision AI models to create maps and update maps very accurately and very quickly, and to create high definition maps or what is called ADAS, uh, which is advanced driving assistance systems solutions in the automotive area or geospatial AI solutions for the government area where you, know, you can do satellite uh, change detection or drone based uh, uh, imagery change detection for kind of detecting new uh, uh, changes in the urban or rural landscape or defense use cases. So we've been using uh, AI internally, but now we're externalizing a fair bit of our AI offerings too. Uh, for example, in Maple's app on the consumer side, you're starting to see a travel AI assistant or a travel AI agent where it's a Gen AI based assistant. You can ask it questions as to, you know, I'm planning a trip, where should I go, et cetera. And you know that tags back into the map and you can book a hotel. So lots of interesting things on the Gen AI side from a consumer angle, but uh, that, that we're kind of putting out, but also giving this AI stack to enterprises and to app developers based on our AI models that we have trained on crores of Indian specific uh, road conditions or world conditions. Uh, so you know that's, that's, that's happening uh, in the AI space. And then uh, yes, finally, the AI-driven data analytics and consulting really will help clients when they think of, you know, what's where do they get ROI on, let's say, store expansion? Or how do they get a sales projection model for potential stores? How should they think about kind of investing money for growth or rationalizing money for profitability? And that's the kind of business analytics and consulting, one part of which is kind of the geospatial data of MapMendia, but also the AI models that uh, you know, that our partners are building, uh, putting that together and doing this bespoke consulting, I think has a great impact on enterprises across QSR, FMCG, retail, BFSI, energy. Right. And I think that, that's kind of what we're seeing in Gen AI. 
Appreciate your time. Thanks for addressing uh, all of the questions regarding your business outlook, Rohan. Good to have you on board. That's Map My India, but from one corporate voice to another, then the spotlight on Sobha to talk about their Q1 numbers as well as what the road ahead looks like when it comes to the pre sales collections, their fundraising plans, as well as the indexation demand outlook. We have If you like this video, then like, share, and subscribe to ET Now.